Hey guys, it's Jess Combs. I am going to be reading week eight, day four of the Emotionally Healthy Relationships book with you guys this morning. Um, get to be in my booth, which I haven't been in in a long time since we've been working on the house. So it's kind of weird to even be in here right now, honestly. I feel like I'm sneaking away from everybody. Um, but we're going to start with two minutes of silence and stillness before God. So if you guys want to go on ahead and pause, come back. I'll see you in a couple minutes. The scripture reading for today is from 1 John, and it is um, chapter 4, verses 7 through 8, 16b, and 19 through 20. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The devotional. In his classic book, Spiritual Friendship, 12th century Cistercian monk Elred of Rivol wrote that friendship, especially between believers, is a direct path to God, not a diversion from it. Paraphrasing a portion of the passage from 1 John, he wrote, God is friendship, and he that abides in friendship abides in God. Elred's seminal insight on God's love has been examined by theologians for centuries. Why? Because when he substituted the word friendship for love, he highlighted a unique aspect of Jesus' love, specifically when he calls us friends. As we move toward people to offer the love of Jesus, we too extend to them a true spiritual friendship distinct from that of the world. It is a friendship that reflects Jesus' friendship to us. Here's how Elred describes what it's like to love as a true spiritual friend. But what is happiness? Or but what happiness? What security? What joy to have someone to whom you dare to speak on terms of equality as to another self? One to whom you need have no fear to confess your failings. One to whom you can unblushingly make known what progress you have made in the spiritual life. One to whom you can entrust all the secrets of your heart and before whom you can place all your plans. In other words, when the love of God is present in friendship, we cease to treat people as a means to an end. We lay aside any desire to get something. We affirm and appreciate their uniqueness. And we acknowledge our mutual brokenness and weakness. In a social media world where so much time is spent managing one's personal brand and consistently appearing happy, this type of friendship is a rare gift. Question to consider. How might you be a true spiritual friend to someone in your life this week? This week. Prayer. Jesus, thank you for calling me a friend. It is almost too much to take in. Teach me to be a true friend to you and to others. Grant me the desire and the power to listen with my whole heart, renouncing my own agenda and appreciating the uniqueness of each individual I come in contact with today. In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll conclude with another two minutes of silence. Thanks, guys.